Hi everyone. Through this class, we are going to discuss some properties of discrete Fourier transform. The circular convolution property of DFT says that the DFT of circular convolution of two sequences is equivalent to product of their individual DFTs. Let DFT of x1 of n is equal to x1 of k and DFT of x2 of n equal to x2 of k. Then by convolution property, DFT of convolution between x1 of n and x2 of n is equal to x1 of k into x2 of k. Proof. The circular convolution of two endpoint sequences x1 of n and x2 of n is defined as sigma m equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of m into x2 of n minus m mod n. Let x1 of n and x2 of n be n point sequences. Now by the definition of DFT, x1 of k equal to sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of n e raised to minus j 2 pi n k by n. Now put this n as m, then x1 of k is equal to sigma m equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of m e raised to minus j 2 pi m k by n for k equal to 0 1 2 3 up to n minus 1. Then x2 of k equal to sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x2 of n e raised to minus j 2 pi n k by n. Let n equal to p then x2 of k equal to sigma p equal to 0 to n minus 1 x2 of p e raised to minus j 2 pi p k by n for k equal to 0 1 2 3 up to n minus 1. Now take the inverse DFT of product x1 of k and x2 of k. Then DFT inverse of x1 of k x2 of k by the definition it is equal to 1 by n sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of k x2 of k into e raised to j2 pi n k by n. Now substitute the value of x1 of k and x2 of k in this equation then it is equal to 1 by n sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 sigma m equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of m e raised to minus j2 pi m k by n into sigma p equal to 0 to n minus 1 x2 of p e raised to minus j 2 pi p k by n into e raised to j 2 pi n k by n. Then rearranging this we get it as 1 by n sigma m equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of m then sigma p equal to 0 to n minus 1 x2 of p then the sigma sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1. Combine all these exponential together. Then it is equal to e raised to j 2 pi k. This n minus this m minus this p whole divided by n. Let this n minus m minus p equal to a q n where q is an integer. Then the sigma, we can write it as sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 e raised to j 2 pi k n minus m minus p divided by n equal to sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 e raised to j 2 pi k q n by n. We can cancel this n. Now it is e raised to j 2 pi k q. And we know that e raised to j 2 pi q that is 1. So substituting this it is equal to 1 whole raised to this k. So 1 raised to k sigma k equal to now we substitute uh, this value 1. Then it is sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 1 raised to k. Then that is equal to n. Since n minus m minus p is qn, p we can write it as n minus m minus qn. Therefore, our sigma p equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of p. Now it is equal to sigma m equal to 0 to n minus 1 x2 of n minus m minus qn. And this is actually sigma m equal to 0 to n minus 1 x2 of n minus m mod n 
or we can write it as sigma m equal to 0 to n minus 1 x2 of n minus m mod n. Now substitute all these values in our DFT inverse. So DFT inverse of x1 of k into x2 of k is now equal to 1 by n sigma m equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of m. Now instead of sigma p equal to 0 to n minus 1 x2 of p, we put it as m equal to 0 to n minus 1 x2 of n minus m mod n. Then the next sigma is already, we calculated it as n. Now this n and n cancels and it is equal to sigma m equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of m into x2 of n minus m mod n. Or this is actually the convolution between x1 of n and x2 of n. Therefore, x2, x1 of k into x2 of k is DFT of convolution between x1 of n and x2 of n. The next property of DFT is circular correlation property. The circular correlation of two sequences x1 of n and y1 of n is defined as r bar xy of m equal to sigma m n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n y star n minus m mod n. Here this r bar xy of m is the sequence obtained by circular correlation and this y star n minus m mod n represents circular shift of y star of n and m is a variable used for circular time shift. Then according to the property DFT of R bar of XY of M equal to DFT of sigma N equal to 0 to N minus 1 X of N Y star of N minus M mod N equal to product of X of K and Y star of K where X of K is DFT of X of N and Y of K is DFT of Y of N. Proof. Let X of N and Y of N be endpoint sequences. Now by the definition of DFT, X of K equal to sigma N equal to 0 to N minus 1. X of N E raised to minus J 2 pi N K by N. For K equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 up to N minus 1. And Y of K is sigma N equal to 0 to N minus 1. Y of N E raised to minus J 2 pi N K by N. Let N equal to P. Then y of k, we can write it as sigma p equal to 0 to n minus 1, y of p e raised to minus j 2 pi p k by n, where k equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 up to n minus 1. Now, DFT inverse of x of k, y star of k equal to 1 by n, sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1, x of k, y star of k e raised to j 2 pi n k by n. Let n equal to m, then this equal to 1 by n sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1, x of k, y star of k, e raised to j 2 pi m k by n. Now substitute the value of x of k here. x of k is sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1, x of n, e raised to minus j 2 pi n k by n. Now y star of k, that is y of k whole star. So substitute the value of y of k here. It is sigma p equal to 0 to n minus 1 y of p e raised to minus j 2 pi p k by n whole star. Then it is equal to when we take this whole star it is y star of p and this e raised to minus j 2 pi p k by n whole star that is e raised to j 2 pi p k by n. This minus become positive. Then uh, this is equal to 1 by n. Now rearranging this sigmas, first we take the sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n out. Then sigma p equal to 0 to n minus 1 y star of p. Then last we take the sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1. Then combine all the exponential terms together. Then it is e raised to j 2 pi k this m then this minus n now this is plus so it is plus p whole divided by n 
let m minus n plus p equal to qn where q is an integer therefore sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 e raised to j 2 pi k into m minus n plus p divided by n equal to sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 e raised to j 2 pi k q n by n we can cancel this n and n so it is e raised to j 2 pi q whole raised to k and we know that e raised to j 2 pi q it is 1 so substituting that value here this is equal to sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 1 raised to k so this is equal to n and since m minus n plus p equal to q n p equal to n minus m plus q n therefore sigma p equal to 0 to n minus 1 y star of p is now equal to sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 y star of n minus m q n plus q n that is equal to sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 y star of n minus m mod n that is equal to sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 y star of n minus n mod n therefore our dft inverse of x of k y star of k is equal to 1 by n sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n then sigma p equal to 0 to n minus 1 y star of p now we can put it as sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 y star of n minus m mod n into sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 e raised to j 2 pi k m minus n plus p by n that is equal to n so here we put it as n and this n and this 1 by n it cancels so dft inverse of x of k y star of k equal to sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n y star of n minus m mod n this is actually the circular correlation x r bar x y of m therefore dft of r bar x y of m is this x of k into y star of k next property is passive walls relation let dft of x1 of n is x1 of k and dft of x2 of n is x2 of k then by passive walls relation sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of n x2 star of n is equal to 1 by n sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of k x2 star of k proof let x1 of n and x2 of n be n point sequences now by the definition of dft x1 of k equal to sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of n e raised to minus j 2 pi n k by n and dft of x2 of n is 1 by n sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x2 of k e raised to j 2 pi n k by n consider the right hand side term of passive walls relation right hand side is 1 by n sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of k x2 star of k that is equal to 1 by n sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 now substitute the value of x1 of k that is sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of n e raised to minus j2 pi n k by n x2 star of k now rearranging this here we take the sigma first that is sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of n then 1 by n sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 then this x2 star of k then e raised to minus j 2 pi n k by n now we take the star outside then this e raised to minus term become e raised to plus therefore it is equal to sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of n into 1 by n sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x2 of k e raised to j 2 pi n k by n whole star then within this bracket this is actually x2 of n so it is x2 of n whole star that is x2 star of n 
or 1 by n sigma k equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of k x2 star of k is equal to sigma n equal to 0 to n minus 1 x1 of n into x2 star of n. The properties of discrete Fourier transform are summarized in this tabular column. 